Hey guys, how you going? I just thought I'd go live and just give you a bit of an update. Uh, we're just real. Lars keeps coming in, keeps coming out. He's just not able to uh, hear me when he comes on, or he does hear me, but his video isn't working. We're not too sure why. This is the first time, the first time it's happened to me. So I thought we'll go live for five or ten minutes. And if we can't get Lars' uh, thing working, then we'll postpone it and I'll have a bit of research. So let me know what is going on uh, whilst I talk with um, with Lars. I, I'm Googling. I'm suggesting a million things. Uh, my sound, speakers, everything's all working on my end. I can hear him perfectly. His camera's perfect. But for some reason... Uh, for some reason, uh, he just can't hear me. He heard me once, but then his camera was frozen. Uh, I'm not too sure why, because we've been live in Norway before. Hang on. Let's try again. No. How about now? You can't hear me now? No. La Can you hear me, Lars? Can you hear me now? He's pressing all the buttons. Yeah, he can't hear me. Um, this is very, very frustrating. Can you hear me, buddy? And he's been working tirelessly, guys, to try and make this work. As you can see, I've asked him to put headphones in. I'm trying everything, but he just can't hear me. And I don't know why. But it is Lars. <laughs> um and he keeps coming out. Um, oh, man. If we can't get it going, I'll go live for a little bit and it hasn't happened. Nah, maybe. Um, do you have a computer you can try? He's been great. He's been brilliant uh, trying to trying to get this going. And if it doesn't happen, uh, it doesn't happen. So I'm not too not too sure why he's not coming on to my why he can't hear me. As you can see, the the video and everything is fine. Um, he is great. I might have to work with him. Uh, I've said all that. Um, yeah, Levan, I've, I've, I've asked him that. He says everything's everything's up. I said, take your phone off silent. I said, turn your phone up. Mate, uh, let's try that. Is your volume... He's going to try on his, I don't know what that, that is. Hey, what's going on, everyone in the chat? Hopefully, if you're just joining, Lars Rebark, and we're trying to get him on. He just can't hear me. He's been a superstar with it all. So, he's been, he's been really good. I'm just trying to check any personal messages or something like, like that. And then we can hopefully try it all again because I thought it would be a lovely... A good surprise and everything like that. Uh, he's been on his phone, Devin's forearm. He's been on his phone. He comes in, he can hear us, and then he can't. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get the big fella on. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise we'll have a bit of a chat and we'll postpone it for another day. Uh, yeah. So what's going on, everyone? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, oh, popping in. Thanks, mate. We're trying to get... Thank you very much, Metal. You're a superstar. We're trying to get uh, Lars's audio to work. He, can, he can't hear me. Well, I really appreciate the super chat. So I'll quickly say hi to everyone. James Stewart is in the house. Um, Roy Baker is in the house. Devin's forearm is hanging around. 
Levan Gasparini, Fish Lips, and S Raza are trying to help me out. And Spermies with uh, with some technical issues. But we'll see how we go. Let's try it one more time. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey! <laughs> Finally. <laughs> we got it. We got it. it. We got it. All righty. I'm going to give you a formal introduction. Here we go. Oh, we are here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Ready Bag, the number one arm wrestling interactive podcast in the world. I'm your host, the Aussie arm wrestler. And as always, I'm your 2019 Melbourne Cup third place left arm amateur, most sorted after trophy in the arm wrestling world. But look at the guest I have today. He is a mega strong man. A mega arm wrestler. He has some pins over some super, super incredible athletes, including the one and only Richard Lapkis. And he's making his comeback at King of the Table 8. I'm talking about my man from Norway, Lars Rabakin. Lars, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Do, do you hear me now, or is it the sound is weak? Okay, I got I find an old uh, headphones. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if it works, <laughs> it works. Thank you for your persistence. Uh, it was. It never happened. It never happened to me before. Uh, <laughs> the the your uh, your technical problem, but we've got we've uh, got it working. Yeah, yeah, mate. Yes. How how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm uh, ex- excited, excited to try this again, arm wrestling thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, where have you been? Like you were, you were heavy into arm wars. You had some time off. You were going to have a comeback match last year. It didn't happen. And now, why is the time right now to come back to arm wrestling? Uh, basically, I did compete from I was. 16 to I was about 36, 37, approximately 20 years nonstop. We started with bicycle and did strongman and did arm wrestling and back to a little bit strongman and arm wrestlings. So I, my body was, I needed to do something different. My back was a little bit hurt and my elbows and I had a lot of other physical things I wanted to do, mountain climbing, fighting, bicycle, I just wanted to compete with myself to be the best all-round athlete. Athlete that for me was possible. And last year I should do a comeback against uh, Matt Mask, but uh, I get COVID and I tried to rush it and lifting too heavy and my arms was totally. Uh, I, I try, I try, but a few weeks before I I couldn't beat anybody so it was no point it wouldn't be a good match and uh, Matt would be disappointed so yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Well, but now I, now I feel better now I feel better yeah oh that's that's what we love show everyone your arms like give, give them a flex look at that that is ridiculous why are they so veiny uh, because Oh, oh. Fuck. Are you still there? Yep, yep. I was. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, no. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh no, you've muted yourself. Uh, you've muted yourself, Lars. No, um, hang on, hang on. Uh, your microphone 
is on mute. Yeah, no, no, yeah, there we go. Know. yeah, 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 um, yeah, my body fat, fat is low and, and it's too low. I was actually, I was the lowest I ever been when I get the phone if I want to do the king of the table. So now uh, I have uh, eat a lot the last weeks to try to get it a little bit up. Well, so how, how much do you weigh now? I'm not sure. I was down to about 220. It was the lowest body weight I have had in like 25 years almost. But now I may be up 20 pounds, approximately 15, 20 pounds up in, in uh, four weeks, approximately. Wow. I mean, I don't think you can ever take a bad photo. Uh, if anyone follows... Lars on Instagram, uh, his his photos and everything uh, are just incredible. Um, can you just give everyone a bit of a, a background of uh, how long you've been arm wrestling for? Yeah, I started in 97, 98, and I arm wrestled for about five or six years straight. And then I did a little bit strongman and arm wrestling on and off. And then I did strongman full time from about two, 2008, nine to 2012, maybe. And then I was back to arm wrestling, did Arnold Classic and Arm Wars and shows like that. Yeah. I mean, your your arm wars, your arm wars career was pretty good. You pulled Jordan Sill, you pulled Matt Mask, you pulled Richard Lutkies. I mean, they were getting, they were giving you everybody. Yeah, yeah it was it was a great fun. <laughs> where was... where did you de- develop the press? Uh, I think it was it gradually did more and more press, but I feel my. My hook was okay and my top roll was okay, but it was not it's not good enough to the uh, to the high level. But my press was real good, I think. Compare so um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly when, but the first time I used it a lot was I think it was European Championship in two thousand four, five, six, something around there. I got second. Uh, and I remember I was up against Andre Andre Pushka, and I knew I could not hook him, I could not be the sand or anything, so I just had to try to go straight through him, and uh, it worked. So I continued with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's it like? What's it like to grip up with the legend Andre Pushka? Yeah, uh, I use a lot of time to. Uh, to not what you're going not to get intimidated is that the word? Yeah, so, uh, intimidated. Yeah, yep. yeah. But but uh, already then I knew if if I could get into my position, he would uh, he would be in trouble. So uh, even if he was a lot better than me and he was a big star and he had he had a war with, a war with Alexei the year before. So uh, I was really hungry that year and. I was not afraid. When we gripped up, yeah, I feel his strength. But, uh, you know, it's European uh, Championship is a big competition and everybody gets tired and you, you have the wars and with other people. So I knew I had a good chance. And, uh, yeah, oh, I had. Ma- so, mate, yeah. It, uh, it's incredible. Uh, it's incredible what you've been able to achieve uh, in, the, in the arm wrestling world. And then you headed over, headed over to Vegas for for arm wars um yeah. were, were you were you seeking matches were you looking for matches at arm wars or did neil ring you up and say lars come uh, yeah neil, neil ring me up <laughs> yeah. so he, he he gave me some pretty good matches so uh, i was thankful to get to pull this strong people it was a really fun time and good competition well, what, what happened during the uh, Richard Lupke's match? Everyone in the chat, uh, go go check it out. Lars Rabarkin versus Richard Lupke's at Arm Wars. You can see it on the Arm Wars archive channel. Because round one, 
Not many people can say this, but you destroyed Richard round yeah. one. Re- yeah. It looked real easy. Yeah, it, it, the round one was pretty easy. But then, uh, you know, he, he's all about the power. He's not so much technical, but he had a team there who adjust him. And when they tell him how to stop the press, and with that power, it was, I think, the second match, too. I got a little bit, and uh, but I couldn't finish him. And then he, he did some pretty big adjustments. And, yeah, he's... He's maybe the strongest man I ever felt when he, he knew how to stop it. It was like in a wall. So he was, uh, yeah, I remember it. Usually when I lose, I'm pissed off, but was not. Uh, he is so, he's such a big legend, and that raw power was, I was just amazed afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I like Richard. He's, he's a real great guy as well. So, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yes. it's, it's always good to hear when uh, legends are good people on yeah, and he's, off the table. Yeah, he's one of my favourite for sure. Oh, brilliant. Uh, we've got yeah. a super chat here from Sebastian Bruvik. Thank you very much, Sebastian, you dead set legend. He says, as ridiculously strong Lars is, he's just a great of a person. Can't wait to see you back on the table, buddy. We'll be cheering Thank you. you on. Thank you. So what? why now, Lars? Why is the time right now? When did King of the Table um, ring you for a match? Uh, I think it's three or four weeks ago. So um, I have got some offers from different leagues in the last... Two, so after I quit with some, sometimes... I don't remember exactly, but sometimes... I got the offer and I'd said no to almost everything. So I feel uh, if I still want to be relevant, I can't continue. So now I have to just jump back into it. So and this to pull off in King of the Table with these big big legends was such a good offer that I I could not say no. I just couldn't. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's great. It's great. Well, this. Um... When when the match uh, when the match happens, and let's let's say you beat Matei Warangi, will this reignite a fire? Will you make a a comeback to arm wrestling? Yeah, it it, it may. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I just just know I focus on this few weeks. I had to get in shape, so my mind is just do the right things and uh, try to get in shape. So then we see. And we see. What, uh, before you started training for this match, what were you training? Uh, what were you training for? Um, I, I was training everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I did a lot of hiking and I did, uh, of course, I go to the gym and do all that things. And I, I was leaning down to do some photos for some sponsors, and yeah, I always had some something I'm training for. So, but it was nothing specific, right? No, but I have luckily I have uh, stay on the table, uh, even if I do like I did uh, the Everest challenge on bike. If you know what it is, yep. You, uh, you bicycle, bu- yeah, bicycle up, and you you do the height of Mount uh, Mount Everest in one day. So even even when I was training for that, I did uh, stay on the table at least once a week. Just I was not strong, but my arm was used to it all the time. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Well, one thing one thing I, I, I have to ask: um, March March this year, uh, why why didn't you come to the Hardanger Open? Uh, I was there. I was yeah, like, I, 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 I was I was there in Norway. Uh, I was walking, but I think I was there one for a few hours one night. So I must have I must have missed you. Yeah, I think I saw you. But uh, that's one of the things as well. Before I did only for several years, I did only competition. I almost 
I didn't work, just a little bit work, and I had sponsors, and I tried to win some money here and there. But now I have a company and a lot of employees, so I just can't, I can't travel as much, uh, especially not in the winter, because we do uh, like snow shoveling and security work. And uh, yeah, my life is more complicated now than before. Before it was just sleep, train, eat. <laughs> Mate, uh, it's going to be great. I just want to show everyone a photo because if you if you don't know uh, everyone in the chat, uh, and we'll get to all your questions in a moment. Thank you all very much. Uh, La Lars Rabakin is taking on uh, the big New Zealander, uh, Mateo Rangi, Hedda Morris. And I don't think many people know. Let me just, let me just put this up. Is... Not that one. I want this one. Is Lars and Matarangi have shared a table before in Hong Kong. Yes. Of yes. all places. And there they are with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of all people. This is just, uh, I mean, where do I bloody start? What was it like meeting Arnold? Uh, for me, it was, it was, uh, it was so big because he'd been uh, like when I started training, even when I was a small kid, I saw his movie, I had his posters here and Sylvester Stallone. So I always wanted to be big and strong and maybe meet him. And he actually, I think it was super match or maybe it was final and open class. And he come when me and Matt had a war and left arm and he, Luckily, I won and get to the congratulation and everything. It was, uh, yeah, I didn't sleep for a week. Oh, mate, <laughs> I, you, uh, you and Marte, I think, are the only two people that can make Arnold Schwarzenegger look tiny. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, Marte. Look. And I, why, I was... why, why Hong Kong, of all places? Uh, I think it was Arnold Classic Hong Kong. They only had yeah. it one year. Yeah, it was a great show. I, I remember I was, yeah, I think I had a super match with Mata. And I was in um, heavyweight and open class. Uh, I think I won everything that year. I didn't lose one match. So I was in great shape and great fun. I think you're always in great shape, Lars. I'd, I'd hate to see a photo of you not in shape. I think you're yeah, always... it's many, many different ways to be in shape, like low body yeah. fat, big, big and strong, shape on the table. So that's the thing. When, like I've done, done for the last five or six years, I try to be uh, in good shape everywhere. But of course, you can't be top arm wrestler in the world when you do the Everest challenge. So you have to sacrifice. But it was just personal goals to see if I can do the Everest cha challenge when I was heavy and I can deadlift 350 uh, kg. Or Yeah, I had a lot of personal things I wanted to try. So not, yeah. yeah. Mate, that is, that is mega. Uh, just a, a few questions from the chat. My man, White Wolf. Says, uh, Jake, can you please ask Lars what business he's in? Yeah, I run a security company. So we do like everything security institutions, uh, mental institutions, nightclubs, uh, festivals. But we have expand. So now we do a lot of uh, what's the word? carpenting. We build things. We tear down things like Demolition Man, old factories. We tear down. Ooh. We do... Uh, we do in woodwork like uh, lumberjacks, and uh, where I live in Norway, in the mountains, it can get really snowy. So we do um, roof, shoveling roof. I like, yeah, uh, and that, yeah, that's like competition for me. How long can you do it? How many hours? How many days straight? So, yeah. Mike, you are a competitive beast. Uh, uh, how tall? How tall are you, Lars? Uh, 190 centimeters. I don't yeah, know what. Six, yeah, six, four, yeah, six one. Yeah, something. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I just quickly see if there's any 
Um, any other any other ones? Uh, Fish Lip um, is saying, how are you going to go comparing the cold from Norway to the heat in Dubai? What do you say, Noel? Um... Uh, he, he's asking, how are you going to deal with the snow and the cold in Norway then you're going to get on a plane and it's going to be really hot. Yeah, really hot. yeah. It may get hot for me, but uh, it's easier now when I'm uh, slim. <laughs> when I was strong man and 300 plus pound, it was hard <laughs> when we go to Australia or anywhere. It was it's hard for me. So. Now, now, speaking speaking of Australia, um, you have been here. If people are wondering... Uh, Lars is in that video where you try and press John Brzezink. Yeah. That, 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 that famous video. Uh, why, why were you in Australia? I uh, was doing a strongman competition. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then it was a challenge, I think. Um, uh, I don't know, $1,000 maybe if someone beat Brzezink. Uh, so I tried to... I think I did the stones, the Atlant stones, and then I have to run over to uh, try to pull him. <laughs> so, uh, but of course, he had pulled a lot of people, so he was tired as well. So, yeah. Was... Oh, it's, a, it's a great yeah. video, but you've done that, and then you, you've pulled some of the... You've had matches with some of Australia's best. Uh, Brett Coots, you've pulled Brett Coots, Ben yeah. Carroll... Uh, how many times have you been to Australia? Uh, I think it's three or four. I've been a lot of times there. I really liked it. And uh, I was staying there for three or four weeks one time. And same in New Zealand. I actually stay in the same town as uh, Mata. And we trained together a lot then. So, yeah, it would be good meeting him again. Oh, wow. We, 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 need, to, we need to get you back. That that is for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, one thing I want to show everyone. I just want to show everyone a photo because I think it's I think it's really cool personally. So there's a photo here, and if you look in the front row, you've got uh, Lars Rabakin and Devin Larratt. You can see Matteo Rangi there, and everyone's shirtless. It's a rule in this photo. You have to you have to be shirtless. Yeah. But this is. <laughs> But this is my arm wrestling club. Yeah. So this is okay. where I go to every Wednesday night. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you, you've you've been to the House of Pain. You've you've been there. Yeah, yeah. We had a good training that night. I remember. I mean, that's uh, that's incredible. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you're wondering what some of the people at my club look like, not many of them. Not many of them are still around, actually. In that photo, only one, two, three of them, besides Devin and Lars, only three of them still uh, still okay. arm wrestle. Yeah, okay. So, so who, like, still, who of them is still uh, arm wrestle? So Andrew with the hat on. Andrew, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, Andrew runs who runs the club. Um, yeah. Then Juan. Um, so back row, the the last two people on the right of screen. Okay. So yeah. the last two people on that on that side, Juan and Andy, they still arm wrestle. And then of course, um, Mate Urangi in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. Andrew here, just on the corner here. He's a he's a famous comedian, so he's he's going really well. He's yeah. he's doing really well. So yeah, I just thought that was pretty pretty cool. Um, this was a, a few years. I think this was twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Yeah, it should be something around that. Yeah, that that was a a few years before the Aussie arm wrestler. Started, started going there. Started going there. <coughs> so here we go, mate. It is happening September twenty third. Lars Rubak and Matarangi head of Morris. Besides table time, Lars, how do you 
prepare for a match? Do you watch any of Marte's matches? Yeah, but, but actually I've pulled Marte a lot of times before. So uh, I know him pretty well. But of course, he's getting a lot stronger and I have got weaker. So it uh, should be more, more interest, interesting now. I, I don't think I ever lost a match against him. Yeah, yeah, I used to have a pretty good control, but yeah, as I said, I, I can see he's have, have good progress. So this time I think it will be interesting. Is there, yeah. uh, because yeah, you, you have pulled him before, is there any, um, any movements from Marte that you're worried about? Are you worried about his hook? Are you worried about his power? Or... Do you think you you can beat him again? Uh, his his power, I think, is is great. He's getting. I think he's even more heavy than before, and he's a lot heavier than me now. Last time I pulled him, I think I was 130 something. I know what is that in pounds? 280, 290. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think he has gained more, and I have dropped down. So um, yeah, I need to be. Really careful this time, I think, and try to peak as much as I can in this week. So, yeah, really yeah, looks yeah. strong. I was really impressed when he pulled uh, Todd Hutchins. Yeah, he put yeah. the brakes on real good. So, um, yeah, he looks scary strong. Yeah, but, uh, and, uh, I mean, it's going to be good. I think Marte weighs between 160 and 180 kilos. Yeah. So yeah. that's <laughs> that's pretty big. Yeah, that's pretty big. I hope I bring quality. Like Irma say, quality, my friend. <laughs> quality, that is right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was another thing I was going to ask. Because you're so busy, you're training for strongmen, you're training for cycling, you're mountain climbing, you're doing everything. Do you keep up with the arm wrestling world? Yeah, I try to. I try to. And of course, I can't see anything. And uh, a lot of times when there are good matches like East versus West and King of the Table, it's Saturday, Friday, and I, I am in the nightclub working. So I try to see. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, most of the times I have to see it afterwards. So, But I try to yeah, stay informed. There you go. Um, we got a, a, just a couple of... A uh, couple of questions. Um, is there a dream match that you would like, Lars? Is there anyone out there that you would love to have a match with? Oh, it's, it's so, so many people. Um, yeah, I, it's hard to say one dream match, but it's uh, the level is so high now and it's so many people I wanted to have a shot on if. If I do this real hard again and I feel my body can handle it and my arm is good. So right now I just focus on this match and then we see it. And I have many dream match for sure. That's for sure. Oh, keep an eye out for that. That'll be great. Um, yeah, the, the, the match I was supposed to have last year with uh, Matt Masker uh, again, was uh, I was really excited for that because... Last time I beat him, and he, he like Matt, he had progressed a lot, and he looks very strong now, so, yeah. Well, I reckon if you win your match easy at King of the Table and Matt Mask wins his match easy at King of the Table, I think you should come on stage, grab the microphone off me and challenge Matt right there, right now, to uh, a surprise match. Surprise, yeah. <laughs> match, you king of the table. Bonus match. <laughs> be brilliant. I yeah. would love it. I would love it. I would love it. Um, people, are, a, a lot of people, including White Wolf, want to know, how did uh, Devin feel back in the day when you were training with him and, and jumped on the, the table with him? Um. I, when I was uh, at my strongest in um, Australia, I feel re really good against him. But like with Devon, you never know because he pulled all the time. So how tired was him? So it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But he, uh, 
he's amazing. Well, I stayed at his house for one week, and he he do he arm wrestle all the day, but my arms was weaker and weaker, and more and more painful. And he's the same. He's the same. So. Yeah, he's uh, he's impressed me a lot. He still have pro- progress, and he's four or five years older than me. So, um, yeah. one thing is to have progress, but we have that high level, and he's still progress. So, yeah, he's yeah, he looks, he, he looks pretty scary now. <laughs> um, he, yeah, he do, he doesn't look human. That's for sure. He he looks no. he, he looks different. Um, uh, everyone wants to know, uh, and Devin's asking, and a lot of people are asking in the chat, who do you think will win between Dennis Saplenkov and Devin Larratt? It will be interesting because Dennis have some of the same things. He have a great endurance and open top roll, but um, I think Devin is too strong now. Yeah, he's too all round too strong, I think, for sure. There you go. Nice and quick and simple, and he and he wins easy. Yeah, maybe not easy, but uh, <laughs> he he will find a way. He will find yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, I mean, everyone can't wait for that match in November. But we want to sit here and and we're very excited because Lars Lars is coming coming back for the table. Um, can you give everyone a uh, a bit of an insight, some information? on how, like, a week of your training schedule goes? Oh, uh, it depends so much. Right now, I, t- I try to re- reduce it a lot. Yeah. You know, uh, but normally for the last year, I have, like, between 10 and 30 hours with cardio uh, because I did Everest Challenge. I did a lot of cardio, not with necessarily high intensity, but I just was on the bike maybe six and eight hours when I was off from work and I did bicycle at night and morning and of course I did go to the gym and I try and le- try and in lunchtime. Last year I dropped it a little bit and did a little bit more high intensity cardio like I, I did a lot of boxing, MMA just to switch things up but now I'm I will reduce it even more after I get the phone call. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I try to lift um, heavier. Uh, not not necessarily like uh, long workouts. I do a few sets with heavy weights just to get my body to remember how it was to be strong. But it's, it's a fine line. Uh, like I, when I did it for Matt Mask, I was a little bit sick and you go up, up, up in weight and you do the heavy moments again. And yeah, you did easily to tear something or little twitch or something so yeah but a normal week for me is like i do at least uh, one one hour in the gym and two hours something outside like walking hiking skiing yeah so i have always two workouts every day sometimes three depends on my work as well because a lot of work is physical like yeah. demolition work or shoveling work um yeah and then when, when will you stop? When, when does training stop for you before this match? Do you have two days off? Do you have a week off? No, I never have days off. I don't like it. I feel I'm just everything shut down so if I have days off. But my last heavy workout, like heavy table time, I had today. Yeah. And uh, tomorrow I go to um, the Alps for uh, climbing and training and gym and... Uh, yeah, it, it it was because we ordered the trip before I get the call from uh, King of Seven. If not, I will stay home and just focus. But I will try to uh, find a good hotel down there and eat a lot and climb a little bit, not to nothing crazy, and uh, go to the gyms. And luckily, the one I'm traveling with is almost as well, so we will do like easy, easy table time. Yeah, and there's uh in, in Dubai, in Dubai, there's incredible gyms there. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, I know. Amazing I know. gyms. I yeah. I remember but, going. Um, I went to one, and I I could have lived there. It was yeah. amazing. It was yeah, yeah. I see. Two story. They had shops in it. I was like, wow, this is this is unbelievable. 
What day will you arrive in Dubai? Uh, Wednesday, I think. I think it's Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, but of course, I don't do anything heavy the last days. Just maybe I will do one hour on a bike and some easy full body workouts in the gym or something. Nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll be there. I'll be there on the on the Thursday. I'll get there the day yeah. after. Yeah. I'll be there, which, yeah. is, which is good. Um, what Wolf wants to know: Who reached out to you last to book uh, to book this match? Who who rang you? Actually, it was uh, Engine and Devon. They were together, and uh, I think for the Irma's fight. So, uh, I think the king of the table asked Engine to find someone to call. So, okay, yeah. there yeah. you go. Interesting. That's, yeah, that's certainly different. Uh, The Metal wants to know, uh, what does your diet look like? Uh, It's it's the same as training. It depends what I'm doing. But the last uh, year, I have tried, um, like, almost no carb. I only eat uh, organic meat, organic fish, organic eggs. And, yeah, it worked pretty well. But now... (laughs) Yeah, but now I'm in a hurry to get some strength back. So now I eat like uh, oatmeal and uh, potato and some rice, but but not too much, not too much. So I have uh, try a lot of diet as well. But for me, it worked with uh, to keep the carbs low and a lot of quality protein and fats. Oh, and you do, yeah, you when I work for so many hours and train for so many hours and I do bicycle for six hours, I need to keep my um, energy. Uh, stable. Before yeah. I did a lot, of, I did too much carbo before, and then it was when you. It's hard in the beginning, but when the body learns to use fat as fuel, it feels real great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what this means, but what is? Can you read that comment? Uh, there is loss. What there is that you are. Yeah, oh, there you are. Means, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I was, hopefully, it wasn't something rude, so I was a bit worried. <laughs> no, <that>. no. <laughs> okay. no, he uh, he is going. He is going to be there. Everyone's just saying that you look great, uh, which is good. Everyone is. Uh, everyone's very excited. Everyone is very excited, uh, including myself that you are coming back to the table. So, if everyone could please buy the pay per view and you get a seat. Lars Ravakin and, and Mata Arangi, head of Morris. Um, will you, it's very interesting, some athletes do it and some athletes don't, but will you grip up at all with Mate before you guys get to the uh, get to the event? Yeah, it's no problem for me, but it doesn't matter that much because as I told you, I've pulled him a lot before, so I know how his big hand feels. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I know what to expect, but of course I know it would be more power. So yeah. Oh man, um, uh, it's go- yeah. it's going to be incredible, guys. We're going to go for about another five minutes. If you've uh, got any any questions to ask Lars, drop them in the chat now before we wrap up the show. And this man can jump into bed because we appreciate it. Uh, his time with us. Uh, the medal. See you later, buddy. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the medal's just saying he is going to go. So if you've got any any questions, uh, will it will it just be press, 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 press for six rounds? Mm-hmm. No, that would not be a good show, will it? So <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we can't say everything, can we? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. It depends. Always, always feeling. Always feeling. So um, we see when we grip up. Yeah, and then on on the day, you're hoping to weigh 130 kilos. 120. No, no, kilos? no, 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 no. That's too much. I, I can't gain that fast. Then it just get water and fat. So. Maybe, I don't think it would be more than 110, maybe 112. It will be my uh, lightest competition weight in forever. 
So <laughs> your lightest competition weight against yeah. your heaviest opponent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's arm wrestling. It's not strong man. In strong man, it will be, be suicide. But arm wrestling is a little bit different. So yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, Roy Baker uh, is asking, do you like Norwegian black metal? Ah, yes. Some, if the mood is right, I can, I can listen a little bit. I listen to a lot of different things, but uh, not very much black metal but sometimes sometimes so how, how does how do you prepare yourself on match day what what does your schedule look like usually i try to do as much as i do in a regular day uh, wake up and do some movements try to go to if, if the competition is in the evening i go to the gym in the morning I just reduce everything and do real light and little bicycle and just keep my body in pace. And then I eat and relax and nothing crazy. In, before I try everything like, oh, competition day, I will eat twice as much as usually and something, a lot of stupid things and that didn't work. So now I just to try to do the baseline. Yeah. Ah, oh, brilliant. Uh, brilliant. And then uh, we've got here. Um, have you? Has Lars ever worked in the North Sea oil fields? No, no, no. Okay, no. I, I don't even know what that is. But what I do know is this man is coming in and he's looking good. Give him another flex, Lars, before we wrap up the show. Give him another flex. Look at that. I don't know if you see it, but... <laughs> oh, mate, we see all of the veins. We see them all. And Lars is going to be taking on the one and only Mate Arangi Hedemara, said king of the table eight. And hopefully we get to see more of Lars Ravakan on the arm wrestling table. Lars, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you. And everybody remember to buy the pay-per-view. Yeah, that is right. And we yeah. well, just want just one last thing before we go. My man Sebastian says, if I'm correct, Lars has a closed grip bench press of 265. And how much can you bench right now? Yeah, that's my personal bench when I was 300 pounds. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I did go up to 180, you know, and it was pretty easy, but. This time I would, would not do the same mistake as I did when I was trying to get strong for Matt, so I stopped there. But uh, I'm far away from 265, that's for sure. I'm not nowhere <laughs> near it. But uh, I think my forearms and the important things for arm wrestling should uh, should not be that far away. So, yeah. And there it is. The man, man. Yeah. He, he is there. All righty, guys. We're going to end the show. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to Lars Rabakin. And we, Lars and I, will see everyone at King of the Table 8. Thank you.